Welcome to the Survival Handbook 2.0, a series that will take you through every aspect of art, from picking a map to play on, all the way up to mutations, tech, bosses, and everything in between. This is the first episode of many where we'll be covering some basic concepts like spawning in, collecting simple resources, and simple crafting. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the helpful tips and tricks coming from the rest of the series, and if you want to catch more art content, make sure to find me live at twitch.tv forward slash terrifierofficial where I stream every single day. When you first load into ARC, you're met with a few ways to play the game that may not be entirely obvious. Firstly, there's the Join ARC button. This option will give you access to ARC's official servers and unofficial servers hosted by individuals, whether it be PvE, PvP, or a combination. Next, there's the Host Local option. This is where you can play single-player ARC or let a friend join your single-player world by hosting a non-dedicated session. To the left are the session settings that you can comb through and adjust to your liking. I do have a video that covers pretty much every option in here extensively, so if that's what you're looking for, then click the card. If you're just starting out though, you'll be just fine with the default settings. In the middle, you have your map selection. Most of you will probably select the island as it's the first choice on the list. However, I strongly recommend checking out Lost Island for your first map. You may have to download it, but it's free, so as long as you have storage space, you'll be okay. I recommend this map because it's got a slew of new creatures released quite recently, very few restrictions, amazing caves, a unique boss, and it's a very large map with a lot to explore. It's the ideal experience for a brand new player, in my opinion. Lastly, if you're on PC, the area to the right is where you'll load up your mods. With the main menu out of the way, let's load into a map and learn about resources and crafting. I'll be loading into Lost Island, but everything will still apply to any map you choose. Now that we've loaded into the map, it's time to customize your character and pick a spawn point. I recommend starting out on the first option as it's generally the safest, but if you're feeling adventurous, then feel free to pick something else. Anyway, assuming you haven't been eaten by raptors, the first thing you should notice is your HUD. From top to bottom, you've got experience, weight, hydration, hunger, stamina, and health. The bar in the middle is your hotbar, where you can place tools, consumables, and other useful items on for easy access. Our first goal for this episode is to craft a pickaxe, and to do so, we'll need some stone, some thatch, and some wood. Stone can be collected loosely on the beach by pressing E on PC, Y on Xbox, or triangle on PlayStation. Wood and thatch can be collected by punching trees, so go punch some trees. Once you've accumulated 10 thatch, one wood, and one stone, it's time to craft. Open your inventory and find this tab at the top. This will take you to your crafting menu where you'll have a pickaxe, a torch, and some paper unlocked. Craft the pickaxe from here, then go back to your inventory and move it to your hotbar. Then exit your inventory and equip it by pressing the button correlated with that hotbar slot. Voila, you've crafted a pickaxe. During that process, you may have noticed that you leveled. Congrats! Open your inventory and pick a stat to increase. We will go over which stats I recommend increasing and why in a later video, but for now, pick something you think will help you. Once you've assigned all your available stat points, you'll be moved into the Engram menu, where you can unlock new items to craft. You can get here by pressing this button from your inventory. Let's unlock a hatchet for now. These are the basics of how unlocking and crafting items work, but there are more advanced types of crafting that we'll get into in a later episode. For now, we need to make sure you know how and what to eat and drink. Typically, when you spawn on beaches, you'll find a ton of nearby plants that you can pick that will give you an assortment of berries, along with some fiber. You'll need the fiber for crafting in the near future, so hold on to that, but let's look at these berries. There are only two you should worry about, narco berries and stim berries. Narco berries will put you to sleep, which is one of the most dangerous states to be in in ARC, and stim berries that will dehydrate you, although they do counteract the effects of narco berries. Fortunately, you can use these berries in crafting recipes later on, especially narco berries, but all the other berries are safe to eat. Berries, unfortunately, are a temporary fix for your hunger. For far better sustenance, you'll have to do some hunting, and I have a few tips to help you with that. First though, I don't want you to dehydrate, so go stand in some water and press your interact button. Great. Now we need some weapons to hunt with. Fortunately, that pickaxe ought to do for now, but if you have the levels, I'd recommend crafting some spears or a bow and arrows to make your life a little easier. Once you've got a weapon, find a dodo or listrosaur, murder it in cold blood, and use your pickaxe to harvest it. Fun fact, you collect more meat and thatch with a pickaxe, whereas an axe collects more hide and wood. More you know. Anyway, once you've got some meat, make a campfire. You can get flint for the campfire by hitting boulders with a pickaxe. Place the campfire anywhere and put some fuel in it. Fuel can be thatch or wood, so make sure you have some of that. Now, you need to put the fuel in the campfire's inventory by pressing and holding A on Xbox, X on PlayStation, or by pressing T on PC. Put your meat in there too and press light fire. Now, you've just gotta wait a few minutes and you'll get some cooked meat. 
Amazing. Now that you know how to eat and drink, it's important that we talk about your immediate surroundings. Beaches are generally the safest place to be in Ark. However, danger is still lurking. There are all sorts of creatures around, and I'm assuming by now you at least know how a few of them behave. The key to being successful in Ark is to understand and manipulate dino abilities and behavior. If you see a new creature and you're not sure if it'll try to kill you, I strongly recommend doing a bit of science and testing its behavior. As you approach the creature, you'll know quickly whether it's territorial, passive, or downright aggressive. Understanding wild dino's behaviors will help you to survive. There's a whole lot more to this game that we need to cover, but for now, you should have a very basic grasp on the game. In the next episode, we're gonna tame your first dinosaur that'll help you survive. So don't forget to subscribe and find me on Twitch where I stream every single day at twitch.tv forward slash terrifier official. Thank you so much for your time, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.